Today we are going to be painting a dragonfly with warm colors and transparent wings. Hi guys, this is Terracotta and today I'm going to be walking us through how I painted this dragonfly and how I chose the color, how I did the masking, and the step-by-step -step process all the way to the point where I added the Let's talk about that part later. So right now, let's talk step by step how I painted this dragonfly. So in the very beginning, we need to have our reference photo. And I found my reference photo on Pixabay. I identified with it because of the very beautiful colors in it. They are analogous colors with a touch of green. I also liked the picture because it is a very clear view of the exoskeleton of our dragonfly. We can see the head, the details on the head, the details on the wing, and the six insect legs. And then the last reason I chose this picture is traditionally people like painting the top-down view of a dragonfly. That means they can paint them easily and conveniently because all of the wings are the same shape and size. But that's not the reality of dragonflies. Dragonflies are all kinds of shapes, they're all kinds of sizes. In fact, there are over 5,000 kinds of dragonflies. And so I wanted to paint something more realistic. So I chose this picture and we're going to be painting from a side angle. There is one caveat about this picture, and that is the near wings are a little bit truncated. They look a little bit difficult. And so I elongated them just a little bit so they would be easier to paint. We're not painting symmetrically, but we will paint longer wings, which I think are going to be easier. Okay. So let's take our picture and we will transfer it to our paper. And by the way, if you are wanting to paint the full version of this, you can find it in my Patreon. And there I go with a lot more detail on how to paint the dragonfly. Okay, so let's begin painting now. You can see that I have transferred the picture and right now we are needing to apply a bit of masking to our paper. And I see that the masking needs to be done in two areas specifically. The first area is along that exoskeleton, there is a reflection and that's what we need to mask in right now because that way along the exoskeleton that will be dark, we will have a bright white. The second area that really needs the masking is the wings and they are very, very complicated. So I think if we break the masking down into two parts, painting the outline of the wings and then painting the center part of the wings, it will be easier. And so to paint the outline of the wings, we are going to be using a script liner. My script liner is a size zero and it is an acrylic fiber so I'm not going to mess it up by using the masking fluid with it. So I will dip my brush in the masking fluid and then I'm going to finally outline all four of those wings. After I outline all four of those wings, I'm going to give a lot more attention to the back part of the wings because as you can see, all of the back part has a bit more glint of light. It seems like there's a little bit of dew on the dragonfly wings. And so I'm just gonna pop in some color right along the edge here and there, here and there, but not so much color on the tips of the wings. Let's say the tips of the wings are a little bit more muted and that the back of the wings has that capture of light. Once we are done outlining our wings, then we're going to think about how to paint the inside. Now to paint the inside, let's paint them wing by wing. 
So let's paint the back two wings first. I think one of the easiest ways is to think that we're going to do about 10 to 12 lines on each of those back wings. So where we put a bead of masking for maybe that dewdrop, we're going to take our brush, put it into the masking, and from that bead, we're going to pull that bead towards the middle of that wing, and then we're gonna pull it towards the body, how it's connecting. We don't need to connect it to the body, but we'll pull it towards the body. And that will make a curve. We will do each curve in the same way. Now some of those curves are gonna to go to the right, and some of those curves are going to go to the left. That will really help us get kind of uh, some detailing that's more natural on our wings. And then we're gonna drop in a little bit of extra white dots just beneath the area where we have a lot of those white dots that are capturing the light on the back of the wings. And now there are two wings left. So let's look at the forward right wing, and this is a very long wing. If you look in the middle, there is still a lot of white that's been retained. So I think if you use your imagination, you can also see one or two veins that go all the way vertically up that wing. We are going to draw those two or three curvy lines, and then we're going to draw curvy horizontal lines connecting those center lines to the outside part of the wing. And that is pretty good. So let's go to the near forward wing, and this wing is going to follow something similar in the middle of the wing, but on the tip, there's going to be some cross hatching. And I would suggest maybe four or five strokes of cross hatching in each direction. You could also do it in the back wing on the left, and guys, if you're worried about doing too many lines on this, don't worry at all. We will be glazing over some of those lines, and that's how, with that glaze and those subtle lines underneath, we get transparency. Okay, so at this time, we will dry our masking, and then we will paint the background. Okay, we are back and my paper is totally dry, and so is the masking, and that's very important. We're now ready to paint wet into wet. In this painting, I am using six colors. I will be using four colors in the background. The two colors I'm not using are the Payne's Gray, which is my darkest contrast, and my Azo Orange, which is my brightest color. These two colors I will keep and use to pop the colors on the dragonfly, and that will separate the dragonfly from this misty background. Right now, let's create this misty background. We're going to get all of the paper wet, very, very wet, except for the exoskeleton area and the four wings. We can paint water over those legs, it's not a problem, but we're going to get everything wet except the exoskeleton and those four wings. And to make sure that everything is wet, I'm going to take a smaller brush and I'm going to take make sure it's very wet and put water right up next to the body, right up next to each of those wings because if we have a gap, there will be a hard line where that water stops and the paint travels in it. We don't see that now, but when the painting is dry, we will see that. That would be ugly. Okay, so as we're putting in the colors, now that everything is wet, we're going to put the lightest colors in the middle around our dragonfly. So we want a halo effect of light around the dragonfly. The dragonfly's body is going to be very dark, and so we want this halo of light around it. The tips of the wings are going to be in the darkest elements of this background, especially the right wing or the far right wing. So we're going to put more dark areas along that area. 
I am also painting, you can tell, diagonally. So the exoskeleton of the dragonfly is in a diagonal position, and that is also where that bloom of light is going to be, that it's going to follow that diagonal position. I'm going to continue putting colors down. Of course, I started light and I'm moving to the darker colors and I will try to build up those dark colors. At some point, the paper just becomes so saturated it can't take any more depth of color. So, in that situation, we let it dry and then we make a second layer for that background and that's when we pop some other colors. Okay, we are back and the background is completely dry. It is time to hide the colors in the background and to paint the wings of our dragonfly. So what we're going to be doing is putting one swipe of water down on everything except the exoskeleton. And then we're going to hide the colors in the background. And then when the wings have almost dried, we will start to touch in some color there. And how I'm touching in the color in those wings is I'm using my cat's tongue. This is a silver black velvet. I highly recommend it. I love it. And I'm using just the side of it. And I am painting in just little bars of color with some neutral washes. And this is very watery paint, but it will stain and add some color to the painting. And I can hide these colors later if I need to. But right now, we put down some light colors. So do understand that underneath these bars of color that I'm putting down, I do have masking. And so that masking is breaking up some of those bars of color. Those bars of color are looking a little bit like it is, you know, the irregular shapes of some of the dimensions in the butterfly wing. And I didn't intend to do this, but I kind of like the effect, and so I would highly recommend this. And this is pretty much how I got a little bit of dimension in that larger wing. I will add one thing. Don't overpaint. That means leave some white areas. You can see that in kind of the central, lower central area, I left quite a bit of white. That is cool because there's a lot of reflection on this wing. Now, painting these wings in this way took a long, long time. I had to think about where I wanted to place that. Sometimes I didn't like the placement. And so I'm just experimenting with what my wings will look like, just because my reference photo wasn't so perfect. And of course, it is much more complicated than I want to paint. So all we have to do is capture the image, and that is our goal, to get the impression that these are multifaceted wings with a little bit of cross-hatched webbing in it. Now, I'm not finished with the wings, but I'm going to let that dry, and I'm going to move to the exoskeleton. And now, my exoskeleton in my reference photo says that this is red. I am having trouble with this particular red without painting just bright red. I'm having trouble keeping that red bright. It seems to want to brown very easily. You may find this also, but again, if we paint too red, then it looks ridiculous, and I would rather have it too brown than too red. But I am building up the color. I start with a pink wash. Then I add in some more detail, and gradually on that exoskeleton, I'm building up more and more color and more and more texture. Each layer could have a little bit of a different stroke on it, um, and I'm going darker on the red or the red-brown each time, just so I can have a little bit of color buildup and it looks kind of natural. And remember, the top part of that exoskeleton is going to be white. It will reflect 
all of the light. So we do want to have dark against the light. And now it is time to paint those delicate legs. There are six legs, as I said, this is an insect. And I pretty much followed the legs from the photo. I thought they were very, very good. I liked how they were separate and yet they looked cohesive. And so I pretty much copied them. I did like the colorations on them. So I took a lot of the browns, the blacks, and the bright oranges. And I've tried to put those colors in my painting. And so you can see that I'm using a very, very fine brush. I found that the best way to get the color on those legs was to make a yellow mix of color. It could be yellow red or a little bit of an orangey yellow or yellow orange just to put that color down and then to pop in that transparent red iron oxide and then possibly in maybe the joint areas or just in some little pops of color I would put in some of the Payne's gray which turned black. And that is how I got a lot of great detail and a lot of realism in those legs. I followed the same coloring scheme when I was painting the face. Again, the face is very complicated. It has different uh, parts because it is an exoskeleton. The skeleton doesn't have skin. It is part of a skeleton, much like a rhinoceros. And so, when we are painting the exoskeleton, we are segmenting it. And that is how I painted the face, which had a lot more detail. I really focused on the detail there. And I also focused on retaining the white, especially in that near eye and along the top of the head and in the area of the face. I did want to make him look happy. I tried to make him look like he was smiling. They are very complicated creatures, but also they're very beautiful if you really, really study them out. So once I painted the exoskeleton, I started thinking I do need a little bit more wing color. And I worked at that for a bit of time. I'm not going to show you the detail there. And then I also decided I needed to pop my contrast. And that's when I really popped the colors of the twigs in this atmosphere. And let's say because of the color, these twigs are fairly close to us because if you have twigs in the background, they'll have softer color and they'll be more blurry. Once my twigs are darker, then I said it is time to finish the painting. We are about done and I needed to pop the colors on my dragonfly. And that's when I brought out my blacks to paint little bits of the paint gray, which is like a black, along some of the exoskeleton, maybe corners of the joints parts of the face and then I brought out my brightest color which is the azo orange to warm up the closest wing and to put a little bit of the azo bright orange on the body and some of the leg parts and I am happy I think this is great I do need one more element of contrast in this painting and that is a bit more white so I take my echo line and I do a spatter. The spatter is going to be mostly in the diagonal corners so that this painting has a diagonal look. With the brightest in the upper left hand corner and the other brightest in the lower right hand, the dragonfly sits on that beam of light in the center of the painting. Guys, I thoroughly enjoyed painting this. I hope you did too, whether you were holding the paintbrush or not. And if you would like to hold the paintbrush and paint this, you can find this full tutorial up in my Patreon. And if Patreon is not your thing, I will still see you next week. So next week's program, we are going to be having watercolor with negative painting.